Have you ever walked into an art show and felt completely lost? Or stepped into a conversation and realized you had nothing to say? Or asked a question that made you feel really stupid? Well, you're not the only one, but that's about to change. Welcome to Art Insider. Hi, I'm Peter Nagy. Hi, I'm Aprajita Jain. And we're here to deconstruct the art world for you. We're here to give you answers to the smallest questions from the biggest names. We're going to be your eyes and ears to the inner workings of the art world, so you can figure out how to navigate yourself through it. So let's get the show on the road. Let's go. A good place to start when attempting to understand art is to ask what kind of art are we talking about? Here on Art Insider, it will be contemporary art that we focus on exclusively. Contemporary art in India today involves a wide range of professionals who work with artists to both exhibit and understand the important art of our times. Contemporary art is, for the most part, made by artists living today. And here, there are virtually no rules. Contemporary art may constitute installations that incorporate both paintings and photography. Sculpture might be a decision rather than a three-dimensional object. And if you're curious to know the difference between a digital photo montage and an interactive performative event, or the difference between biennials and art fairs, or to explore the gray areas where galleries, museums, collectors, dealers, and critics all overlap, then this is the place to be. To better understand what we mean, let's head over to Nature Mort, a gallery that has been at the forefront of Indian contemporary art for the past 20 years. Now, with contemporary art, it's important to know what the art is about. Of course, all art is about aesthetics, but at the same time, contemporary art is about issues. Artists working today are part of a globalized world, and they're influenced by a wide range of issues, such as social and political dilemmas. So often the artist wants to challenge the viewer, engage the viewer to think creatively, think different about not only art, but the larger issues of the world today that affect us all. After studying communication design and art history at New York's Parsons School of Design, I went on to open a small gallery, naming it Nature Mort, the French term for still life. I became very interested in art, but I came also very interested in the envelopes that, that we create for art, saying galleries, magazines, museums, you know, art has to be put into a context. I was living in New York and I was just obsessed with going to galleries and museums. I mean, I just saw everything. And it was a very exciting time in New York and the, the, the art scene was booming. So then really by a fluke, there was a little scruffy neighborhood where we lived in New York called the East Village. And one day he says to me, let's start a gallery. I moved to New Delhi in 1992, reopening Nature Mort there in 1997. The scene has changed tremendously. I think there's a lot of really, really great talented artists here and there's a lot of scope and I think India needs to build up its own contemporary culture. Though both Aparajita and I collaborate on all aspects of the gallery, basically my job is handling the art and the artists while she concentrates on the business side of things. I think uh, my love affair with art began at school thanks to my principal. And I remember her telling me that if you don't enjoy the arts, then um, you could have a very dry existence. An artist told me that uh, you've got to decide where you want to go because you can obviously do things. So do you want to go towards the decorative side of art or do you want to go towards the intellectual side of art? And um, that's when I decided that what really got me going was the content behind the art that I loved. Yeah, we did the journey. 
So then this corner is coming this way. Let's see, can I just spin it? Let's see if we like that. Peter came to me and said, would you like to, you know, buy into Nature Mod? And he needed an Indian partner to survive in the country or to do business in the country. And of course, the only other option was that if he didn't find a partner, that it would shut down. And I mean, for me, it was like a, it was like the altar, altar place to come to, you know, where art was concerned in the country. And uh, Nature Mod happened 2013. And here we are, 2016 having a blast. Art being produced today is anything but passive. It is not just a painting or a drawing framed and hung on a wall. Artists are exploring materials, methods, techniques and subjects in ways that not only engage the viewer, but challenges them to both think and react to the art. Take for instance performance art. a medium where live actions by the artist's body become works of art. It involves many disciplines. There can be an element of visual art, video, sound, or even sculpture. Ideally, it consists of four basic elements. Time, space, the performer's body, and a relationship between the audience and the performer. I yell these words because they were taken from my mother and they were given to me as a man. Traditionally, sculpture as a medium of art employed techniques such as carving, chiseling, and modeling. But technology today has led to the creation of new tools that are constantly redefining this medium. As we develop new materials, sculpture continues to be an ever-expanding art form. Its evolving nature makes it anything but conventional. Another evolving medium is that of photography. Many say today technology has turned everyone into a great photographer. But that isn't so. Surely it has made taking photographs and disseminating them easier than ever. But it is not the technology that makes a photograph great. It's actually the way the photographer sees the world that makes a great photograph. Video is a medium that is being widely used in larger installations, performance, and sculpture. Even though it has been around since the 1960s, it is a medium that continues to confound viewers. The best way to understand video is to rule out what it isn't or does not have. It isn't plot or narrative driven. It may not necessarily have actors or even dialogue. It is an art form that is changing and challenging the very definition of art and we will explore this medium in our episodes to come. As we discover the many mediums of contemporary art today, we simply can't forget the basics. Drawing and painting are both mediums all have dabbled in, whether artists or not. These two-dimensional art forms continue to be refined and will examine both in future shows. The art market in India began to bloom around 2005, and at that point in time, it was estimated to be worth about 50 crores. But today, the art market in India is worth anywhere between 1,200 and 1,500 crore. Art is a serious business with serious players. While of course the art and the artist are at the start and heart of it all, art must be exhibited to be finished completely. This is where the galleries and gallerists come into the picture. They represent the artist and his or her works, sometimes acting as an agent, sometimes as mentor, and many times as support systems. Then there are the critics, specialists who analyze and evaluate the art and hopefully give an unbiased opinion of the work. 
The circle is incomplete without the curator, who is yet another specialist, who selects and often interprets the work. They put together the shows for both museums and galleries. Finally, there is the very precious backroom staff. All institutions have a staff of people who handle logistics and management and make everything run, hopefully, smoothly. Often these roles overlap, and the same person can be performing multiple functions within the art world. I know this might be confusing, but in future episodes, we're going to explain things in greater detail. And hopefully demystify the Indian art world one step at a time. But before that, we get into a break.